Today on Seculo, a nightmare scenario emerges as reports that Republicans and Democrats, at least some of them, are teaming up to find a Speaker of the House. We'll talk about that and more today on Seculo. Keeping you informed and engaged, now more than ever, this is Seculo. We want to hear from you. Share and post your comments or call 1-800-684-3110. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. The Daily Beast has it. Republicans and Democrats quietly consider a speaker deal. It doesn't name a lot of names. I'm not saying this is, by the way, Kevin McCarthy. He's been uh, against this. But others who have said, you know what, if Kevin McCarthy can't get the votes and there's not really a, a secondary, we've now heard that a lot of that group of 20 wouldn't be so satisfied with Steve Scalise necessarily right. anyways. There is breaking news also that I want to get to right away, and that is that last night there was a report that they had come to a deal that may bring up to uh, 10 or 11 votes over to Kevin McCarthy today, which would, I think, start maybe a break in the dam. Then, maybe just before we went on air, more breaking news, the deal never got finalized. So, so they were not able to get it from where they were to where they wanted it to be, to put it basically that this was going to be the deal. So we're moments away from ballot 12, ballot 12 starting on the House floor, and we will know, like we know these votes very quickly, if anybody has peeled off. But but that was breaking news just before we came on the air. Yeah, it's interesting to me, and one of the, you know, look, we don't want to see a nightmare scenario, and the longer this goes, the worse this gets, and it does look like chaos, which we said. And, you know, people are saying, well, it's just a day or two. This is democracy and uh, the Constitutional Republic. This is a, a republic in action. The problem is this. When you got the Daily Beast running a headline, that, and I'm just going to read the headline, because when we said this, people said, no, no, this could never happen. Republicans and Democrats quietly consider a speaker deal. And then you see these photo shots inside the House. And you got AOC meeting with, you know, Matt Gates meeting. With, I mean, it's, it's you know, folks, th this could go in a hundred well, wrong directions. Out with AOC. Yeah. I mean, th the problem is these things are, po are are legally possible. Yeah. No, no, you don't have to have just Republican votes to get a speaker or just Democrat votes to get a speaker. You could have a group of Democrats and Republicans who say, I am sick and tired of this. And I've worked in countries where they've come up with these power sharing deals where they'll say, okay, you get it for a year, and then we get it for a year. Or you get the speakership, we get uh, half the committee chairs, or we get divided committees, like the Senate kind of was, right. like 50-50 committees, uh, which would, again, hamper the entire Republican victory. This is why, well, it's, I think not, it's, it's already hampering as a warning to yeah. all of you, why we've got to wrap this up. Because how absurd would it be that because these 20 rebels – that we end up with a Republican majority in the House that had to give away its majority. I mean, that's what we're talking about. It's majority power. Now, I don't think that's going to happen tonight, but let me tell you something. They do another day of votes that don't change anything at all, where nothing changes at all, and we get to, what, uh, 13 today before they adjourn? It's been I mean, about three a day. I'm talking to people in the evenings that yeah. are dealing with this, and they're saying it could go into the 20s, which you would – now, also, McCarthy wants to not have he wants to not have votes after this one, right? That was his idea to adjourn. So, will do we have any update on the adjourning issue? They don't know if he once. has the votes to do that. Or they're about to vote in. Uh, they'll vote today at least one time. Correct? At least one, and McCarthy wants to adjourn for the at least till Tuesday. And what do you think? I think that that adjournment vote will be very close, but I doubt the Democrats and unless they've got to get out of town. There are more and more, remember, people who have plans, they got kids, they got families, they have weddings, funerals, doctor's appointments. Things happen, and so they are human beings. Yep. So you wonder if they all say, okay, we need to take a weekend, do the phone calls, and come back next week. But I do think we're going to at least see one vote, which will tell us if there's been any shift. The indication has been last night that we were going to see a shift. Now the indication, Dad, is that we are not. Yeah, and that shift would have been a big deal, even if it was just 10, which would not oh, have been yeah. enough. It would have been a momentum shift. If You know, look, I still think it should be Kevin McCarthy because he's got vast 85% support. But the longer this goes, is not getting better.
No nominee having received the majority of the votes cast, a speaker has not been elected. Kevin McCarthy's bid for the speakership has now been defeated a total of 11 times in a row in just the past three days. The House adjourned just a few hours ago and will come back into session at noon tomorrow. McCarthy has now made several concessions to the group now known as Never Kevin Republicans who are dead set against seeing him with the gavel. What you're hearing yes. is that Kevin McCarthy is going to bow out but there'll be a, a way for him to get to this 2-8 team, right? What would Correct. that be? That there will be within the next 24 hours, for what I hear, and I repeat, everything could change, that he will have an agreement with uh, the 16, 17, or 18 of the holdouts, and they will vote for him. I can confirm major negotiations have been going on all day behind the scenes while these votes were taking place today with Kevin McCarthy and many of the Republican holdouts, and I can report that at this hour a document is being put together that will go a long way to settling differences. Will it get Kevin to 218? We won't know until probably sometime tomorrow, maybe Monday. Late last night, some conservative holdouts felt they were making progress. A deal with McCarthy was coming together, giving them more power on key committees, on floor rules, and on fiscal policies. But at the end of the day, many McCarthy critics remain firm no's. It's not one side's going to get more than another. It's the entire conference is going to have to learn how to work together. So it's better that we go through this process right now so we can achieve the things we want to achieve for the American public, what our commitment was. So if this takes a little longer and it doesn't meet your deadline, that's okay. Because it's not, it's, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And if we finish well, we'll be very successful. Secular. We're taking your phone calls, too. We want you to weigh in, 1-800-684-3110. I did notice, too, in the chat, some people said I, I sounded biased by calling the 20 rebels. I want to just be very clear to you. Of those, of those 20 who have been in Congress, some are new, yeah. so we haven't represented them. But but I, I donated to some of them uh, uh, to get to Congress. But the others, the, the 12 or 13 that have, have been on our briefs. We support them. That we, we like them. We're friends. Uh, so I don't use rebels in a negative no, way. No, no, no. That's just that's they're kind of using that term. I think that that's what they are. I mean, that, I think that's kind of how they define themselves. So don't see it as biased. We're just trying to report facts as they exist, and also, you know, where this goes as it continues on. I want to go right to Rick Rendell now. He's our senior advisor for foreign policy and national security, but he's all been in politics for his entire career as well. And Rick, one thing you pointed out, which was interesting, is that the D.C. media and mainstream media kind of embracing this idea that can you believe these Republicans want more accountability and they want more power uh, given to these uh, members of the House of Representatives so that it's not just five or six people that pass millions and millions of dollars worth of legislation and your congressman never has a say on it. And the D.C. media thinks that's great. You know, we should do a whole show sometime on why I torture myself by watching CNN for an hour every once in a while. It's it's crazy. But this morning I was watching and they literally had all voices, not a single dissenting voice, all voices from the media, some, you know, serious media people from Axios and from The Washington Post, literally mocking Republicans for having this process where the majority of regular Congress people are going to have a stronger voice and there's going to be less power for the Speaker of the House. These reporters in D.C. want more power for one person, the Speaker of the House, to move forward. They're very accustomed to having Nancy Pelosi just gavel down and everybody follow. It's weird. It's yeah. weird that they're freaking out that somehow Republicans want a decentralized power system. That's what reporters are supposed to want as well. They're totally corrupt. The whole thing has been flipped on, on its side and they don't even realize it. One thing that's got is interesting to me, Rick, as all this is going down, and that is I, I do think that, you know, a day or two or three of this was fine. I think a week or two of this is just not good. Again, not bad constitutionally, not bad for that's how a democracy, a constitutional republic works, but just, you know, bad for atmospherics. And you and I deal, and Jordan, we deal with atmospherics. The atmospherics are not good because it looks like chaos controls. So the question here is I can't figure out, though, what the end game is for the 20 after 
he gives all these concessions. I mean, what else can he do? He steps aside. They're not going to be okay with Steve Scalise. I mean, that's the yeah. problem here. Look, I, I think that we have to stop um, assuming that the 20 are literally all like-minded. I think they're right. like-minded right now on Kevin McCarthy, but many of them have policy differences. Many of them want to see balanced budget amendments. Many of them want to see uh, substantive issues change. And then, you know, there is Matt Gates, who I like Matt. Uh, we're friends. And Matt has just said publicly, I'm just against Kevin. I just want, I don't want Kevin. So uh, I do think that the 20 are a little bit different. And that's where Kevin has to, you know, Kevin McCarthy has to begin to maneuver. Can he peel away enough of those people on substantive issues? Um, but I, I go back to this point that Kevin made that I hadn't thought about that I just saw in the clip that you all played, where he's saying, look, some of this fight we needed to get out. We need to figure out you know, where we are as a caucus, and maybe having the fight now is going to save us having a fight on every single vote in the future and have some sort of chaos on votes. Um, we're working ourselves out on, to, uh, on the way of Republicans in the House, how they view legislation and how they view the priorities. So in, in essence, maybe some of this fight is good, but you're right on the optics. Certainly the media is, is pounding us, but uh, you know the media should be celebrating decentralized government and more power to the people. And better ratings, you'd think. 1-800-684-3110 is the number, 800-684-3110. We want your opinion on all this, folks. Where do you see it going? What do you want to see happen? Let's go ahead and take a call. Yeah, Ann calling from New Mexico online, too. Hey, Ann. Ann? Oh, looks like Ann dropped. You know, it's one, one thing that was interesting uh, yesterday was a speech. I don't remember which congressman. It was one of the 20 who's opposed. But he talked about the unanimous consent. And, it, and how that happens on Mondays, and usually it's it's names of post offices and things like that and buildings, but then it adds up to hundreds of millions of dollars that you, your member of Congress, uh, Rick, never voted on, and that it's not so much that it's controversial in naming the post office after somebody who passed away who was a well known figure in a community, but it's that um, there might be ninety percent of that legislation is done like that, but then there's ten percent done by unanimous consent on Monday when no one's there. And that is substantive, and that and the taxpayer is on the hook for paying. And that I, so I do think, and maybe Kevin McCarthy was referencing that yep. too, we do need rule changes away from how the Democrats were governing. Oh, for sure. Look, I, let me tell you a dirty little secret about unanimous consent on Mondays. It's because nobody's there. They're right. still in their districts, and they want to move business along as quickly as they can and do things where we don't need everybody signing off. But they've abused it. They've abused, the, instead of just doing simple administrative things on Monday that can move forward on unanimous consent, they're putting big budget spending issues through on unanimous consent. That should really make people angry about it. I, look, I think that one of the things that Kevin's got to do is tell all offices to come back to work. This COVID is over. You got to come back. I do agree. You can't work at home. And why, if we're paying them a full salary, why are they not working full time Monday through Friday in Washington D.C.? I'm I'm all for making them work Fridays and Mondays. Certainly for the Senate, you know, we got to say you got to work Mondays, Tuesday morning and Thursday afternoon and Fridays. That that should be a mandate, because right now they go into session on Tuesdays and they're done, you know, Thursday morning. And so no wonder we can't get a lot done um, because they're just working two days. I mean, look, my, my attitude is we either go to a part-time Congress and pay them part-time and make them only show up for two days every now and then, or if we're gonna pay them for a full salary then show up to work for a full time. So we're about to have the 12th vote while we're on live, Rick. This will be vote number 12. Not likely, based on what we're seeing, that Kevin's going to have 218. The Democrats are, of course, total lockstep. They, they got their 212 down. You got this report coming out of uh, Daily Beast, which I, I don't put a lot of credence in, but it's this, it's, it is the nightmare scenario you worry about. We're, we're not a coalition government country. That's not the way our republic is set up, but... The headline, Republicans and Democrats quietly consider a speaker deal. The scary part about all this is 
it doesn't take much for that to happen. I mean, it, if, 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 if people get worn out. So I worry about the, the worn out factor here. And I also start to worry about in a week governing, lack of governance. There, you got the Senate side. They're investigating things already on Republicans. The House is supposed to have Judiciary Committee with Jim Jordan in the chair, which I think will be fantastic. He wants to have investigations and oversight on uh, China, on on Hunter Biden, on all of the some of the Biden administration pullout policies in Afghanistan, the border. Great, but none of that happens while this we don't have anybody seated in the committees, and that's we're losing time. Yeah, look, I don't put a lot of credence in the Daily Beast. Uh, they've become total mouthpiece of the left. But um, there is there is a chance that this could happen. I think it's it's very slim, and it would require Republicans to actually go along with electing, uh, you know, either a Democrat, a conservative Democrat, or a very liberal uh, Republican. I think that those people that do that would immediately face backlash from their districts, even if their districts were kind of a uh, a 50-50 district. I don't think it's going to help them. I think it spells disaster. And we would know it as it's creeping forward. It's not going to come out of the blue. Yeah, Rick, as always, we appreciate you joining us. We're going to keep you, because uh, it looks like this is going into next week. I mean, yeah, uh, there were reports last night that there was a deal on the table. And then on by this morning, right before we came on air, uh, the breaking news was that deal has not was not uh, put together in a finalized form. So, We'll know very soon. I mean, I, Rick, I guess I ask you real quickly, final thing. If Ken McCarthy in one of these votes, and I think it would have to happen in the, the, probably this first one or else they're all going to be the same, gets five or six peel-offs, do you think that is a sign that the dam is beginning to break in his favor? Yeah, I think at that point then you're going to see whatever's needed, the six or seven, eight more that's needed to suddenly come forward and say, well, this is what I need. Yeah, uh, the question is, is that even going to happen? I, I don't. I mean, right now, there's no they indication. They thought it was today, but it doesn't look like it now. Then the other question is, are they going to vote past oh. the one vote or going to adjourn? Are there, is there enough votes for a motion to adjourn? And do we have any idea, Will? Are they adjourned or were they adjourned until Tuesday? Did we hear from our ACLJ action people, or do we uh, hearing anything on the news? No it's one all, knows? Well, it's just a, it'll be a vote. I mean, and it's, it comes down to the Democrats, yeah. whether they want to stay all weekend and, and, uh, they might. and some of those Republicans. They might. This is good for them. Yeah. Visually. All right, Rick, we appreciate it. We'll take your calls when we come back. 1-800-684-3110. Your reaction to Chaos Week 1. <laughs> 1 800 That's 800-684-3110. Don't forget, support the work of the ACLJ on so many issues, including the life issue. We've got information out today uh, on our emails. We encourage you, if you're not getting the emails, to sign up for those at ACLJ.org. But we've got a lot of pro-life activity going on that we've written about today. ACLJ.org. In my time in service, both as CI director and the Secretary of State, I watched the good work that the ACLJ was doing here in the States and all across the world. The ACLJ's work at the UN, overseas with the European Court of Justice, is incredibly important. We have on our team lawyers, non-lawyers as well, that are policy experts. They're all engaged in foreign policy issues. We have been focused on protecting the nation state of Israel, particularly before the United Nations. We don't shy away from the battles that are going on at the UN and just complain about them. We actually try to go in and do something positive and actually affect change. The risk of a incomplete or unsolid relationship within the United States of America and Israel is real. Israel is very important to the ACLJ, and we will always fight for Israel's rights. We had a series of cases at the European Court of Human Rights, primarily dealing with religious liberty. And the Secretary of State, I saw this too. Nations that had more religious freedom were on firmer footing. They had better democracies. America has always been the world leader in religious liberties in freedom of conscience, and freedom of speech. We've taken the First Amendment, and that has been our cornerstone. It's to defend the rights of people of faith and others that are having their rights abused. We not only hold our government accountable, but we hold other governments accountable. You have to keep the battle going when it's not cool anymore, when it's not the number one story on TV. You have to actually be committed to fighting it out, or else you'll never win. The ACLJ's front and center on this, whether it is going after the deep state, whether it is litigation that we're engaged in, your support of the ACLJ enables us to do all of this. Go to ACLJ.org today. That's ACLJ.org.
All right, welcome back to Secular. So we are uh, awaiting the first uh, first of the now 11th vote. Yeah, this is number 12 right number now. Number 12 while we're live. Uh, this is the fourth day. Questions remain about, again, any, will there be any shifts in voting? Will they continue voting all day, or will they adjourn after this vote and then go into basically negotiations through possibly as long as Tuesday until we start doing this again? Or is this going to go until 8 or 9 o'clock and again tonight and then 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock they tomorrow? They adjourn and, and then in, they can be in session tomorrow too. Now, Kevin McCarthy yeah. wants it pulled out for a few days. Yes. Try that, to get this figured out. Yeah. So that that's his goal. If uh, I'm the Democrats, I don't do it. Yes, unless you've got too many who have got too many engagements, they just Let's, literally have to get home. We're going to take calls. Our phone lines are jamming up, 1-800-684-3110. Who do we have next? Yeah, let's go right uh, to the phones. Uh, we'll go to Bill in Wyoming on line one. It's interesting call. Hey, Bill. Hi, thanks. appreciate your tolerance for my calling so sure. much. But uh, I've been praying for uh, unity and cohesiveness in the leadership because I feel two things. Number one that uh, from what I heard, it may be wrong, that uh, somebody offered the deal of having one person call for the uh, Speaker of the House to be removed uh, instead of five, which to me, uh, somebody like that, uh, the Speaker brings up something that the person doesn't like, he's going to call for uh, removal of the Speaker, and bingo, there's going to be chaos right there. Number two, the fact that um, these, uh, this is, if they get one person up there to finally have the speaker, uh, they're only going to have one year, as far as I'm concerned, to do their job because it's the way I see it. Next year, they're going to be working on seeing about getting reelected. Yeah, and, no, you're, uh, Bill, you're, you're right. I mean, you, every day that goes by is another day you're not governing. That's number one. Number two, you're also right that, you know, this time next year, they're really into their races for office, which is understandable because that's what they, they do. Uh, number three, and in my view, Jordan, I, you're, you know this very, very well, the problem that you have right now is nothing is getting done substantively. No committees are formed, no committees are chaired, no, no committees are made. St- like, I mean, I'm sure they have technically, like we know Jim Jordan would be the, the Judiciary Committee chair. Uh, so he probably has his staff in mind. Mm-hmm. But but that staff is not working. You know, next like, week they don't get paid. Yeah, the staffs. The staff on the 13th. And the members. The members do get paid. I think they do. No, I think that they can lose their payment no, and I, their health care. I think the members, I, I thought the members get the pay. They're not the, the sworn staff in. doesn't. I thought the staff didn't. I'm not sure. But the staff does not for sure. Yeah, they start losing health care. So they're going to, they're, James Clyborne is putting up Hakeem Jeffries again. He will get 212 votes. Yeah. Will Kevin McCarthy get 212 votes? Because he's not gotten that so far. He's gotten no. 202. The question is, I mean, does he get 205 today? I mean. If there's any movement, in other is words. Is there any movement at all? And if there is, you know, I don't know if three is going to be a, a damn breaker, but I think if it's six or seven, but the report out was the call last night turned chaotic amongst Republicans. Yeah. And what they thought they had a deal, I think when, like, Sean Haney was on air still, so that was at night, you know, nine yeah. o'clock Eastern time, the report out was they had had a deal. Yeah, CNN was reporting it too, but they then they and, got and, on a phone call to ha- to finalize it, and it didn't. It fell apart. And Let's so go by this morning. Yep, no deal. Let's go right back to the phones. We're taking your calls at eight hundred six eight four thirty one ten. We've done a lot of calls this week because we want to know what you think. This affects how your life is impacted on this because this is how Congress governs or doesn't. Uh, again, eight hundred six eight four thirty one ten. Gail's calling from Virginia on line three. Hi, Gail. Hi, how are you? Okay, I absolutely am against McCarthy. Um, I know that he is corrupt. I know this bill that was passed is not going to where they say it's going. I know that the Ukraine war is not what they're telling us it was. And this was a deep state bribe and bonus bill. Okay, so let me ask you, I'm I'm not going to disagree with you on a lot of the stuff that was in that bill, which, by the way, Gail, I'm like you, I have no idea. I don't think any of us still know what's in it. (laughs) I mean, it was... The amount of money was breathtaking. But you, you make a, a, a strong statement when you said, you know, Kevin McCarthy is corrupt. Exactly what do you mean by that? Well, uh, basically, I'm a remnant. God called me five years ago. I understand, ago. but, you, but you just accused a, a member of Congress of being corrupt. So that's a pretty strong accusation. So what is it that you're saying? Because I, I, we want to talk these things out. Why yeah. do you think he's corrupt? Absolutely, because he keeps going behind our back. And he keeps siding with – he's doing things that he's telling us he's not doing. Like? He's talking for, give me a for instance. Things. Give me a for instance. 
um, he is covering, he, he tore down Madison Cawthorn because he was exposing things that was going on. Oh, no, he didn't tear yeah. down Madison Hawthorne, the, the former congressman. He did a pretty good job on himself. So I wouldn't blame that on Kevin McCarthy. It's like I, I find it ironic. I, I, Gail, I appreciate you calling, but I find it ironic that our new congressman from Tennessee is adamantly against Kevin McCarthy, but he wasn't adamantly against Kevin McCarthy when he came into Tennessee to his district to raise money for his campaign. And, and gave him a speaker's cabinet. And gave him the speaker's gavel, as yeah, the, the as congressman president. did, as a yeah. president. A- Andy Ogles. Uh, and he's Who brand- we voted for. Yes, and again, a brand new congressman. So he was, on, again, uh, was a mayor to Congress, and now he's part of the, tw- someone convinced him to join that group of 20. But yeah, he, there's all these pictures all over the place with him, I and mean, he was happy to and be taking that money. You know, when, so when people say, oh, he's corrupt, or he's this, I, I, people yeah, better Madison, be specific Madison, here. It was himself. It was the all the stuff that came out about him. I mean, uh, opposition research comes out about you when you run for office. Yeah. And I don't think that was necessarily Kevin McCarthy. Uh, I don't think he loved Madison Cawthorn, but they had, you know, again, he that's, that, well, he, that, that, it wasn't behind the, seat. the scenes. You lost those seats. I don't think they're glad they lost the Republican seat. Trust no. me. And by the way, when people say there's too much stuff going on behind the scenes, that's called Washington, D.C. Yeah. Most of it goes on behind the scenes. All right, let's take Kelly's call out of Arizona. Kelly. Yeah, hey, Kelly. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for all you do. You guys are a true blessing. Uh, I just wanted to say I hope this is such a great turning point for America because what I see that's going on, this is very much needed. We want to make sure that there's a moral compass that all of these representatives have. And because we send them to Washington to do our job, it's almost like they're supposed to send a morality clause for us so that we know that they're going to stay on the right track. So I love this process. I hope uh, that everybody, because you know, whenever you're working with someone close uh, day in and day out, you know their character. So I don't know McCarthy personally, never met him, will never meet him probably, but I have someone from Arizona that's standing up for me that gets to work with him and knows whether he has that good moral compass that we send him to do our job for. Well, look, I mean, I... We, we, Jordan and I have said this, and we do this as a partial disclaimer here. We represent and have represented the Supreme Court of the United States. Almost everybody that's you're reading about, including the people that are for McCarthy, including the the, the ones that have been in Congress that were against McCarthy, have been on our briefs. I, I think of one of our briefs. I think every one of the opposition votes have signed on to our briefs. So it's not like we're picking sides here. It's just Kevin McCarthy has ninety percent or eighty five percent of the votes. Yeah. And it's, so when we say this is good, this it, it when it becomes not good is when things like this start leaking in, in the newspapers or in the in the daily journals like the Daily Beast. Republicans and Democrats quarrelly consider a speaker deal. That would be a disaster. The fact that that even could be a headline is also a disaster. So that's how you have to look at this. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to continue to take your phone calls. One 3110 I'm Matt Gates speaking now. Who did we know who he nominated this time? Because he moved away from Donalds to Trump, uh, uh, so we'll see again. Uh, and we continue to take your phone calls at one 800 Support the work of the ACLJ yes. at ACLJ.org. We've got a brand new email out. If you don't get your email alerts, go to ACLJ.org and sign up for those. And this is on the pro-life issue. We've got a lot of activity there. And your support in 2022 was great. We need your support in 2022. ACLJ.org for that. Back with more in a moment. In our nation's history, we've never had this happen, ever. They don't like conservatives. They don't like your viewpoint. They were going after the free speech of American citizens, and these kind of actions just keep eroding the trust of American citizens in our government. This isn't about politics. This is about people and people's lives. They wanted to pressure social media companies to spy on Americans and to eliminate your ability to speak freely. Your government is weaponizing intelligence agencies to go after their political opponents. That's really scary. You're not just saying, I want to change you know, the priorities in the FBI. You're saying, I want to get rid of a lot of these people. This is driven by expanding the size and scope of government. This is amping up the political environment to a level that I don't think we've seen in U.S. history. Keeping you informed and engaged, now more than ever. 
This is Seculo. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. All right, welcome back to Seculo. We are taking your phone calls at 1-800-684-3110. Give you a little bit of lay of the land as it stands right now. The 12th speaker vote uh, has not started. Nominations are being made right now. <laughs> we know that uh, Kevin McCarthy has been nominated. Hakeem Jeffries will be nominated. Do we know who Matt Gates is nominated yet this time? Not yet. He's he's speaking right now. Last uh, Yesterday it was Donald Trump, uh, so we're not sure uh, yet. Uh, the, the, the question today is do any members who have been in the uh, no vote on Kevin McCarthy on the Republican side shift? Because last night there was breaking news. I tweeted it out. That it was reported that a deal had come. Uh, that a Explain deal had to everybody made. when they say a deal. What does that mean? That like they had put down into writing these concessions that we keep talking about: mm-hmm. the motion to vacate, the, how how we vote, uh, committee chairs, committee positions, who gets on what. That that had actually been formalized, but then there was a phone call after that with all the Republicans, and it turned chaotic. Right, and then this morning. Breaking news just before they got to the floor, and I think that's probably put out by the McCarthy people, is we did not come to any kind of final deal. So I would not expect right now yeah. any vote changes. I think that's right. But but we will see soon if there's any change at all. Let me go ahead and take Ann's call. Let's take go ahead and take Ann's call on line one because she has a really good question, and this will give us a chance to explain some of what's really going on. Ann, thanks for calling in. You're on the air. Okay. Thank you for taking my call, and thank you for everything you do. Sure. Okay. My my question is, if uh, any American citizen right. over a certain age can be nominated yes. and voted in as speaker, yep. what about asking a semi-retired Republican that is respected by both sides, like Newt Gingrich or Mike Huckabee or Ben Carson, to step in? and take the speaker's role. Okay, so you're right that a you don't have to be a member of Congress uh, to to do this. You could be a third, it could be Ben Carson, Mike Huckabee, Newt Gingrich. But let me tell you, Ann, and the reason I was glad to take your call, it's really not about the person. Because those twenty aren't gonna want Mike Huckabee or Newt Gingrich or Ben Carson if they don't agree to their demands. And we're trying to tell you what the demands are. And so far the demands have been have laid out there. We've laid them out for you, what they've conceded. There is nothing else that Kevin McCarthy can do, in my view, as a lawyer, a constitutional lawyer, someone that understands separation of powers and how Congress operates, who has been on the floor of the United States Senate, that if he gives any more authority away, he will not be a Speaker of the House, and nor will any of the other names being circulated. So, and it's not so much Mike Huckabee, Newt Gingrich, Ben Carson, all good people. Yeah. It's can they give away any more? And there's no more to give. And some of the requests that are coming that I do know of, I'm not going on those today and discussing those today, they're just outrageous. So now we have interesting enough, too. There was a walkout during Matt Gates' speech. I okay. don't know who walked out. I don't know what he said to cause the walkout, but I'm watching the – Are we – we'll And then he nominated Jim Jordan. Which we know Jim, Jim Jordan, Jordan does not want it. Does not want it. Now Lauren Boebert is going to nominate someone else, which shows you that now, group of twenty. But this is chaos. Doesn't I'm have, sorry. This is chaos. Well, the rebels. The rebels are chaos. The rebels don't have a candidate. No, they have no one they can agree on to support for speech. Folks, you know if you're watching on social media, if you're watching on Truth Social, not Truth Social, Rumble. Which I guess if you are watching Truth Social, you're watching on Rumble because that's the way that works. Hit the plus sign so we can share this with more people. Share it on Facebook as well. You know how to do that. Swipe over. Same thing on YouTube. We've opened up some phone lines because we're taking calls aggressively here. 1-800-684-3110. That's 800-684-3110. You're not getting this kind of analysis anyplace else. We've got lawyers and and legislative affairs people working it right now to give you the most up-to-date and current information. Let me also tell you this. Support the work of the ACLJ as you did in 22. Do it in 23. Because we've got a big fight on the pro-life issue. I think we're going to see more victories. But that's where you come in. Go to ACLJ.org. Make an online donation. Support the work. We encourage you to do that. And we're going to be back with more, including your calls at 1-800-684-3110. Back with more in a moment.
No nominee having received the majority of the votes cast, a speaker has not been elected. Kevin McCarthy's bid for the speakership has now been defeated a total of 11 times in a row in just the past three days. The House adjourned just a few hours ago and will come back into session at noon tomorrow. McCarthy has now made several concessions to the group now known as Never Kevin Republicans who are dead set against seeing him with the gavel. What you're hearing is that Kevin McCarthy is going to bow out but there'll be a, a way for him to get to this 218, right? What would Correct. that be? That there will be within the next 24 hours, for what I hear, and I repeat, everything could change, that he will have an agreement with uh, the 16, 17, or 18 of the holdouts, and they will vote for him. I can confirm major negotiations have been going on all day behind the scenes while these votes were taking place today with Kevin McCarthy and many of the Republican holdouts, and I can report that at this hour, a document is being put together that will go a long way to settling differences. Will it get Kevin to 218? We won't know until probably sometime tomorrow, maybe Monday. Late last night, some conservative holdouts felt they were making progress. A deal with McCarthy was coming together, giving them more power on key committees, on floor rules, and on fiscal policies. But at the end of the day, many McCarthy critics remain firm no's. It's not one side's going to get more than another. It's the entire conference is going to have to learn how to work together. So it's better that we go through this process right now so we can achieve the things we want to achieve for the American public, what our commitment was. So if this takes a little longer and it doesn't meet your deadline, that's okay. Because it's not, it's, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And if we finish well, we'll be very successful. All right, welcome back at Two Secular. So the votes are beginning now. Now, you have worked on presidential campaigns. You have worked on congressional campaigns. You've worked on senatorial campaigns. You have worked Capitol Hill from, since you were basically 17 years old. Yeah. Okay? You're not 17 anymore. Have you ever seen anything like this? No. Okay. This now is something that hasn't happened more than 100 years. Okay. I have been doing this since the 1980s, over 40 years. I've never seen it either. And here's what's happening. We had some hits in the midterm elections because of chaos candidates. And unfortunately, this is looking like chaos governance. And that, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, it's not so much. I, I, I would not mind if this was all sorted out uh, by this group of 20. And maybe they had to go through a few rounds of votes mm-hmm. to get to some of these changes that I think are good. But at this point, like you said, if you got your changes, and there's really only four who have said they just will never vote for Ken McCarthy, fine. What about these other 15? What are they doing? Why are they still voting no? Well, Chip Roy supposedly was brokering a deal yesterday. And, folks, that's what happens on this. This is all about – it's not so much the person, understand this. It's brokering changes in the rules. Some of them, I think, are great. You know, 72 hours before you sign a trillion-dollar bill, good idea, okay? I mean, I think those are good. Reducing the threshold on the speaker uh, is removal to that number of five to one, uh, I think really – it puts the governance in danger, but okay, you could live with that. The problem is what else is left to do? And also, the Democrats, don't kid yourself for a minute. They love this. They love this headline, okay? Quietly considering a speaker deal, Democrats and Republicans. This is what they love. They said, we told you these people were chaotic. They kept the Senate. We barely get the House, and and this is what we've got, and we don't have a speaker. So we're taking your calls at 800-684-3110. That's 1-800-684-3110. But this is going to start having real consequences next week. You can get through this weekend, I think. But my goodness, are we not going to be – I mean, we know that a lot of payroll stops next Friday, right? A lot of payroll stops next Friday. We don't know if it's the members themselves, but their staffs don't. So this has got real consequences real soon. Real soon. Yes. I mean, that's why I think, again, you've got maybe this weekend – Maybe. Maybe Monday. But then, like, you know, the president's going to go to the border. He's going to announce all the serious uh, border security initiatives. And yep. we're still going to be fighting over, does Matt Gates get to pick who gets to be on the rules committee? I mean, the, the thing is, you may love Matt Gates, but he doesn't have that kind of power. <laughs> Nor should he. No. He's not in He's not in leadership. and He hasn't built a, a, he, a strong enough group. Uh, he's not correct. Uh, 
head of the RSC. He's not the head of the Freedom Caucus. He's... <laughs> so, most of the Freedom Caucus people are with Kevin McCarthy. Yes. And most of the RSC. So, I mean, this is, again, this is where you got to go and uh, and deal with the issues. So we had a case at the Supreme Court of the United States, I have a case, um, that was, um, and this is interesting, well, we got a breaking news thing here. So we got two two flips to Kevin McCarthy. This is a big deal. Yes. So um, who went to Kevin? Bishop? Who else, Will? Okay. I didn't even remember. I, I, Bishop, I know, Breach, and I don't remember even seeing that name. But but so there's two. So he has gained two. Okay. that Listen, it doesn't sound like a lot. It's a lot. I mean, that, the vote's just early right now. It's a movement. So the vote's early. We are watching this for he you. He hasn't yet lost. Usually by now he'd already lost. Yeah, they would say not likely to carry 12 he'd already, votes. He'd, he'd, he'd yeah. five. Let me right. give a Supreme Court update quickly. We have this religious, usually religious liberty case out of Florida that affects the entire country. And I will tell you this right now that um, it was supposed to be distrib- It was supposed to be in conference today, which means the Supreme Court certiorari conferences today. The case was pulled earlier in the week, which I, it usually means that the, it's getting some attention. It's just not going to be ruled on, so we're not going to have an answer to that one today. They'll they'll reschedule it. We'll see what it does. Let's go ahead and take a call. Eight hundred six eight four thirty one ten. Who's next? Yeah, Julie in California, online too. Hey, Julie. Hi, Jordan and Jay. Yep. Um, I have a question and a comment. My question is allowing just one member of the House to vote to oust the Speaker at any time. Will that be abused and stop all congressional action in the future? It was the rule for 100 years. And it was actually uh, Paul Ryan had done some, Nancy Pelosi, then it took it to 50%. It does not mean that one person in the House can remove the Speaker. It means that one person can call on a vote to remove a speaker, and then there has to be a majority to remove. So I do think one is pretty low number, but the thinking there is that it's low because most people are unwilling to jump and take that. Uh, they're scared right. of taking on the speaker. So if you get one person who's willing to, to get out there. So, again, I don't think it's that destructive. Have we gained another so we've gained, so Kevin McCarthy's now up to three. Well, this is a, this is a good, this is positive. We're seeing change. Him. Yes. This this allows, I think, already now Kevin McCarthy to stay in it. And whether it finishes today or next week, it's also probably a good sign that if he wants the adjournment, yeah, he probably could get the votes to yeah. adjourn, which is interesting. We'll watch that closely. But if he can get enough votes, what is he, a couple more? He could probably get the adjournment with some Democrats. But well, we will watch it closely. Continue to take your phone calls to it. 1-800-684-3110. That's 1-800-684-3110. Sharon in California, online one. Hey, Sharon. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. I just wanted to say um, that in spite of what this looks like, it might not be a bad thing. Because when you think about how our founding documents came into being, Benjamin Franklin shut the door of the chambers and said, nobody eats until this thing gets resolved. And they came up with our Constitution and some great documents. So instead of worrying about optics, let's worry about the final result, because we can't keep voting for the same people and expect different results. Well, I I think, listen, it's not bad to have a lot of this done. But, again, most of this should be done behind closed doors because this should be done like amongst friends. It's fine to have some of this done out, in, but, you know, we're only getting a hint of what's actually being done behind closed doors. We're only getting the the, the final points. I mean, uh, so all of these members are negotiating behind the scenes. I think if you're a Republican, what you want is, okay, you might love the debate, and listen, this might have led to some good rule changes, but ultimately, ultimately, <laughs> You have to get on with it. I, this is what I've said. If this can come to a close in the next few days, fine. I think people forget this ever happened. Yes. But if you get into two weeks plus, people will not forget, and they will not forget when they vote in a year and a half. So here's the question. He's got three votes that have shifted so far. Votes Voting still going on. So we'll see. You know, We're going to know real soon. It, if he gets up, so that would put him from 202 to 205. He still has 15 votes to get. But then if you get a big movement like Chip Roy, 
And he brings, as he said yesterday, alluded to, he got he two could more flips. Two more just now? So now he's up to, he got five flips. Okay, so if you're Kevin McCarthy, you keep the votes going. You want another round, yeah. maybe? Maybe not? Or maybe maybe you want to just take take your victories that you've seen. Oh, I think there's been a six. I think uh, Donald's. No. Oh, Donald's was the fifth? Okay, so I'm just seeing a little delayed on so he was probably nominated for yep. he's now flipped. So he's left. So the the rebel group is crumbling. Yes. So people need to understand that. All right, let's go ahead and take uh Jeff's call out of Virginia. We're taking your calls at eight hundred six eight four thirty one ten. Jeff, go ahead. All right. Are we on? Yes. Okay, good. Um I have to say I know it's embarrassing. I know it's troublesome and it's in public and I agree with what you guys say about this should have all been figured out in advance yes. and behind closed doors. But here we are. This is transparency at its absolute finest, and the biggest thing we got to avoid is what exactly some of the, the fellas said. Doing business as usual means the liberals win, period. There is no such thing as bipartisanship. Bipartisanship means conceding to liberalism. If we really want to make the changes, if we're going to take those gentlemen that, and the ladies that were nominated and elected by the populace to make changes, yes. the time to do it's now. The rubber doesn't hit the road until the 20th. Let's get this stuff done. No matter how painful, no matter how the, embarrassing. The hit the road on January 3rd. Well, the rubber's going to really hit the road on the 20th, if I'm correct. If I'm wrong, I take it back. But well, nonetheless, no, we need no, to no, do no. this. The rubber first. hits the, the Congress was supposed to be was, was January 3rd. It's when the new Congress came in. So let me just put this out. That's a presidential inauguration. That's a presidential inauguration you're talking about. That has nothing to do with con congressional uh, calendars and what is the current Congress. Now, that's completely wrong. That's one. Number two, Jeff. Uh, you say it's time for McCarthy to remove himself. Meanwhile, they've got how many peeled off today so far? Three or four? Five so far today have peeled off for McCarthy. And don't forget, Kevin McCarthy has now 207 votes of the Republicans in the House of Representatives. Okay? he's Unfortunately, that's the second highest because you know who's got the highest votes in the House of Representatives? Hakeem Jeffries from Brooklyn, New York. He still does. Maybe that'll change today. But it's moving in that direction. So that's why we want to keep educating you on what the process is. This is about rules, folks. It's not about Kevin McCarthy, the person. And there's nothing else for him, in my view, to give up. No. No. I mean, that's the point, view I'm taking. Everything has been put. Everything I think that we're some gonna... of the things they got are great. Yeah, I do, too. I think that some of that, a lot of that could have been done in two days. Yeah, or it could have been done for um, two months ago. And maybe it will be. Maybe this will be a three, four day. You know, day. you looked at Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert just there on air. They could kind of sense it. They, they could sense where it's going. You could tell in that picture they know where this is going. When we see something, when we hear something, when we're concerned about an issue, we don't just talk about it. We do something about it. And that goes to our government accountability project. If we allow leaders in Washington, D.C. to make decisions behind closed doors, unaccountable to the people, then we are going to get skewed and corrupt decisions. There are lots of other places that do lots of important work for America, but the ACLJ has taken up a lane which is irreplaceable. The Freedom of Information Act, that's a statute that allows us to get information from the government. It starts with a letter from our offices in Washington to these agencies. And it says, give us this information on these topics. And generally, they don't. And then we go to court. We go through a series of lengthy negotiations back and forth about what they'll give or what they won't give. We may get tons of information that's redacted, and we have to then go back and say, you redacted too much, we can't really find out what you're giving us because it makes no sense. So it goes through a process of litigation. That is how you get information, and that office is going to be more active now more than ever. The ACLJ has been extremely active in vigorously seeking to hold these bureaucrats accountable we have filed hundreds of FOIA requests. We have received over 20,000 pages of documents in our litigation. Holding them accountable, holding the Biden administration accountable so that all Americans are able to have faith in their government. We will up our efforts. We will not stop. You're finding a nugget in a gold mine. Occasionally you'll come up with something that is really a bombshell, but you have to persist in doing it, and that's what we do. That is a, that's a, is a little bit of what we do through our Office of Government Accountability, and of course, that comes under our Office of Government Affairs. So your support of the ACLJ supports all of that.
right, welcome back to St. Hugh. We're still monitoring any changes yet in votes. Not yet, so okay. But we do have, just so if, if you're just joining us, for the first time in uh, 12 rounds of voting, Kevin McCarthy has gained votes. So he's gaining votes from the group of 20. So he's gained five. Um, one of those was the person they, they were putting forward a lot, Byron Donalds, out of Florida. Uh, so that was the fifth. There could be more. Uh, they're not even halfway through the vote yet, uh, yeah, but so we're monitoring that closely. We've got a Secular Brothers podcast. Logan's going to be back in the studio, and so um, yeah, a lot of people watching that yesterday. Yeah, Looking so we good. will. Uh, we will again. We'll, we'll get a better idea too. If there's, we'll, we'll know the end of this vote. Matt Gates just walked out. Uh, maybe he's very. Unhappy. Is he back again, or just walked no, out? He just again? walked out. Well, he knows what's happening. Let's be honest. The honesty is. He's starting to votes are starting to peel away. Do we don't know if those are Chip Roy's people or not yet, or do we? They are. Those are the Chip Roy's block. So that was the end of well, we'll see what how many of those if so if he brings his ten in, that will put this will be interesting. That would leave after the twelfth round Kevin McCarthy tied with Hakeem Jeffries. Here's right. my prediction. As soon as Kevin McCarthy goes ahead of Hakeem Jeffries, the floodgate opens. Yeah. And and then this was a good exercise. They got some stuff. Daniel's calling from California on line four. Daniel, you're on the air, and we're taking your calls at 800-684-3110. Daniel, go ahead. Hello, I'm Daniel. I'm calling from Riverside County, California. Yes. I have an opinion. Uh, well, first, I want to thank you guys for your work. Thanks. I've been a supporter since 2016. Great. Thank you. And, and because of your information, you, have, you guys have helped a lot of people out here in Southern California change your vote, their vote from Democrat to Republican. Uh, my opinion is this. Maybe these 20 holdouts, these so-called rebels, are are just doing this just to show their um, constituents that they are listening to them. And they're willing to make changes and do different things to make a change in the swamp, especially yeah. after the multi-midterm election, just like we had right now. Yeah, I'd say, I'd yeah. say the Chip Roy group yeah. is that. Yes, I think that is the Chip Roy group, who's a friend of our broadcast. They get elected and because they, are, they are willing to take on the authority when they think the authority needs to get their act back together or make a change yes. in, in policy or procedure. And I think that's the group right now that we see shifting. I think it'll be interesting. I probably could predict that, but it'd be, you would assume Chip Roy, once they get to the R's, is going to be in this group. Yeah. But I think this number is going to go up for Kevin. Yeah, I, t- I tell you, I th- I really think when it gets to – Technically, it's, he's lost it. I mean uh, – there haven't been enough flips. Six voted no. No, but I mean. If... So that means he's not going to carry this round. But he's clearly had a vote shift. So the question's going to be on the vote shift, folks. And this is what's so important here. I mean, when you get down to six or seven rebels. Not, the six or seven members of Congress cannot hold up the works of the entire United States government. No, they're in the House of Representatives. They'll divide and conquer their well, very And that's why if, if, if Matt Gates stormed off. He did. That was what that was. You know that's what it was about. All right, we're taking your calls. 800-684-3110. Bill's calling. Indiana line one bill go ahead yes um, thank you for all the work that you do yes. and we listen to you almost daily so beginning of the week McCarthy had 217 so what happened between now and Friday oh, no. that he's got to fight again to get that was back the up so that was the reporting that he had maybe 217 or the 218 that he was needed but that did not materialize on the first vote he's never gotten above was it 201 Two, two, 201. 202. 202, 202. Yeah. 202. Yeah, so, 202 Bill, he's had highest. his highest has been 202. And this so, will be his now his highest. So he is second right now to Hakeem Jeffries from Brooklyn, New York, the Democrat, who in the House of Representatives, everybody gets to vote for Speaker. They've all voted for Hakeem Jeffries. All the Democrats, 212. So he's got 212. Technically, McCarthy is behind him. Now, if these votes continue to shift as they are starting to today, it will be interesting that if in the next round, if there is a next round today, does or at the end of today, does he get to or the end of this round, does he get to two twelve? Because of all or two thirteen. Once he surpasses Hakeem Jeffries, I think it's a a uh, atmospheric tiebreaker. Well, and did, it legally doesn't make any you significance. Divide and conquer the five. Well, that's what's already happening. You, you already pitched them against each other. Yes. And, I mean. I know it sounds nasty. I mean, are it's the part final of holdouts going to be Lauren Boebert and Matt Gates? Well, I think they'll never vote for him. But let's say, did Bishop say he was never going to vote for him? And he did. Yeah. So he did. He had some little bit. Okay. So, 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 yeah. I mean, you can. He can lose four. Yeah. Uh, I think he probably will not get Boebert or Gates. But okay, if that's what you you didn't get out of everybody, it's not like we we wouldn't take them on our brief and support their you know of course their policies, but. I get their effort. 
appears to be falling apart as we speak. Yeah, I think it's fair to say I'm looking. I'm looking at some stuff up, but it's fair to say that if as this is crumbling, um, as votes peel off and and I think end by up the going to Kevin, podcast, we'll, we'll really know the full. You're gonna, yes, by the time you do your your podcast this afternoon, you're going to have a I think a better, um, yeah, a better it, sense of where this is going. Are they going to Did they adjourn? Yeah. And how many did he get on this vote? We're not yeah. going to know that the next, unfortunately, uh, twenty. How do you think this ends up affect? Let's assume Kevin McCarthy does pull it out, which it looks like if this continues to happen, he does. How does this affect his governance? I think at the end of the day, uh, people forget. Yes. Okay. He's still the speaker of the house. And he becomes the speaker of the house. So when Third you in line. The speaker of the house. You, you come. I mean, I don't know how many people have been to that office, spent time there. It is uh, impressive. Oh, it may be the most impressive office of any office in Washington D.C., including the Oval Office. Yeah, because of the view of the whole uh, National Mall. Yeah. And the staff that you get. I mean, the and it, it's a unique role because you're not going to be in the committees, hashing out, asking questions. Right. You're working the floor. You work in votes. You work in legislation, uh, and again, I think again that's why it's unique people to fill those roles. Like I said, usually it's a it's a job by the end of it that people are all mad at you. Yeah, it's you can't friends. keep every this group that's you know of two hundred eighteen people. Well, that's why I think Jim Jordan would like to stay. I don't blame him. He wants to stay as a popular figure. Yeah, a popular figure. How do you do that? You chair the judiciary committee. That's out, which he'll right. be great at, by the way, and we'll look forward to working with him. Once he gets sworn in, the whole thing starts. But first, it's got to get they got to get sworn in, and it has to start. That's the key for all of the success. Swear them in and get it started. But you got to get them to 218 first. Yeah. So I, again, I think we are we're, we're watching it close. We'll see if there's any more switches in the last couple minutes of the broadcast. You I, want to talk about this immigration move because the White House is about to make a move here. Yeah, I think that's impo- it's important. And I think again, if they, it's going to be a weird situation, folks, because it's it's some restrictions that we like. And gives enforcement mechanisms that we like. It's kind of taking the Title 42 and applying it to Title 8. And that sounds confusing, but Title 42 was the temporary measure for COVID. And they, they said, you know, it basically, if you get in the United States, you're an unlawful entrant, we deport you back. And basically what, what we understand, we haven't seen the document yet, what President Biden is proposing is basically the Title 42 mechanism in Title 8 as part of the permanent ongoing work. Now what's interesting about that is the le- groups on the left – are going to complain about that, and they are threatening to file a lawsuit. So you want to hear the irony? But we would do this, folks. If we think the legislation that President Biden put forward is correct and is protecting our border and he gets sued, you know what we're going to do? We would defend his administration on that issue if we think they got it right. Yeah, if we, like, if if they think, we, if we think they got it right. Finally see I that, want to that see that the actual package. document. I also want to update you quickly on ACLJ and our work in Pakistan. Yes. Uh, this is up at ACLJ.org. There's a case there. Where a Christian shop owner uh, who, who uh, made like snacks and food uh, was shot by Muslim men because they didn't think it was fresh enough. And he's actually famous for what he makes and paralyzed. Uh, not only did we get them imprisoned, which they should be, but we actually uh, are helping his because he's par- paralyzed uh, and lost uh, movement of his one arm and both legs. We were able to use our resources to help uh, a medical procedure a surgery, so he now has use of both arms. That's great. And that's because you're a supporter of the ACLJ. So that family, I know if they could, would be thanking all of you right now. Looks like there might have been another switch. Yep, CNN is reporting Kevin McCarthy has gained support in the 12th round of Another voting. switch. Yep. So, so there you go. All right, more on the second of the oh, podcast. Oh, Luna switch. That's big.